Good morning Forex Baptist Church and welcome to our Sunday morning service. To those of you who are regular attenders, welcome and to those of you who are new today, a really special welcome to you as well. We hope you've had a lovely week even though we know that this is a very, very difficult time and we hope you've seen God working uh, through that week. We're going to start this morning's service in a way that has become um, a really big part of the way we work at Forex Baptist Church and that is with a moment of silence. We're going to still our hearts, we're going to, um, to press pause on what's going on in our lives at the moment and we're going to make the choice this morning to focus our eyes on God. So a minute silence. Loving Father, we come to you this morning with open hearts. We pray for the situation that's going on at the moment, this awful pandemic that we're in the midst of. And we pray that you would bring wisdom to the people who are making such important decisions. Um, and we pray for the health of our world. Lord, we pray for people who are struggling through this pandemic whether that be people who are isolating, people who are stuck inside, who are away from their families, people who are feeling lonely, we pray that you surround them with your love. And Lord, we pray for the people who are sick. Um, we pray that you, they would feel your presence. <clears throat> Lord, we pray for our key workers, everybody who is putting their lives on the line, putting themselves at risk in order to help us. And Lord, this morning we want to play for the Black Lives Matter movement. These scenes that we're seeing across America and across the UK. We pray for justice. And Lord, we pray that anybody who needs your support would be able to reach out to you. That they would know that you stand up for the oppressed. That you support them, that you surround them with your love. And we pray that they would feel that power. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
to Calvary, where Jesus bled and died for me. I see his wounds, his hands, his feet, my Savior loved that cursed We are so blessed to have so many children in our congregation. We're coming to the part of our service that is um, primarily aimed at them. So gather your families around if you have young people with you. This is the time that they can hear a word from God, they can hear Bible stories, and we can have some fantastic craft activities and some lovely worship music.
know, did you know? about the Holy Spirit, God's Holy Spirit that comes from heaven and fills my heart and helps me on my walk with Jesus. It's so wonderful to have God's Holy Spirit in my heart, isn't it? Do you think that too? Now I've got my glow sticks again <laughs> to remind me of God's Holy Spirit and I've got my candle to remind me. It's like a like a glow in my heart. So we can glow. Did you sing the song, Glow? And did you do the rap? Let's just see if we can practice the rap. If you didn't, you need to practice the rap. And that includes the grown ups. All those feeling young at heart, come on. We want you to join in with this rap as well. So let's have a little practice. So it goes throughout all history. No, no more mystery. The same spirit lives in me. Holy glow, holy glow. Get up and glow from your head to your toe. Pass on the glow, don't go with the flow. Glow in the dark, glow on and on. On your marks, get set, glow. Well done, did you join in with all the words? So today's story is called Kind and it's written by Alison Green and illustrated by lots of different people. Imagine a world where everyone is kind. How can we make that come true? Here's a good place to start. Just give someone a smile. There are lots of good ways to be kind. We can listen to people, especially when they're sad. We can give them a hug if they're feeling lonely. If someone's frightened or worried, we can offer to hold their hand. If they're in trouble, we can see if we can help. Tell someone a story to cheer them up. It's good to listen to their stories too. And let's make sure no one's left out when we're playing a game and that everyone is cared for. Have you ever made a kindness jar? Every time you do something kind, put a marble or a button into it. 
I bet you'll soon fill it up. What else can you do to be kind today? Here are some good ideas. Can you help carry a bag? Or pick things up people have dropped? Or let someone go in front of you? It's really kind to be patient, especially when you don't feel like it. Animals need lots of kindness too. What do you do best? We're all good at different things, so let's give everyone the chance to shine. Sometimes extra kindness is needed, such as when you meet someone who's new where you live. Can you be a good friend and help them feel at home? What's their favourite game? Is it a quiet one? Or a really noisy one? If they're trying to learn our language, Perhaps you can tell them new words. How about learning some words from their language? Look at all these different ways of saying hello. Sometimes people have lived through very hard times They've had to leave their homes and countries because of danger. They are brave and amazing and have extraordinary stories to tell. How can you welcome them? Can you share your toys with them? Or draw pictures together? Sometimes people say we don't have enough to share and there's no room for anyone more. But maybe you can say, there's plenty of room, come on in. After all, if you don't let people in, you'll never know what you're missing. There might be a wonderful new friend just outside the door. Everyone is valuable and we all have gifts to share. Let's be curious about the world and all the people in it. It's fun to see what we do the same and what we do differently. Everyone can be kind, even if they're really small or a bit shy. It feels nice to be kind and it's a good idea too, because if everyone is kind, we'll make a better world. So, we're thinking about kindness. Did you enjoy that story? Now, um, we're thinking about kindness because Jesus said that we should love one another. And he actually, the quote in the Bible is from John 15 verse 12. Love one another as I have loved you. That's what he said. And we've practiced this bit before, haven't we, where we make a heart shape and we say love one another but we're just going to add as I which point to Jesus have loved you 
So we'll try that again. Love one another as I have loved you. And if we love each other and we love all the people who aren't that easy to love, just as much as the people who are easy to love, that will make us kind. We will be doing what Jesus has asked us to do and we need his Holy Spirit to help us, right? So, with that in mind, we've been making kindness pots from the story. So, here's our kindness pots and we've just got an old yoghurt pot and we've put stickers on it and jewels and things. And this one's got numbers on. We haven't finished this one. And every time you can think of something kind that you would like to do for your family or something else, it might be taking something to somebody else in the car. We can't do very much in lockdown, but there are things that we can think of. We can write a letter, we can phone people up. We could do all kinds of things. And every time you think of something or you do something kind, you can fill up your pot. You could fill it with pom-poms. You could fill it with beads. You could fill it with money that you could maybe give to a charity at the end of lockdown. Or you could fill it with sweeties and share your sweeties with all your family at the end as well when it's full. Now, before we go, uh, we will say our prayer. Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your Holy Spirit. We thank you that you are there to help us, help us to be kind and to love each other just as you taught us. Amen. We came into the point in our service where we would usually take our offering. Unfortunately, at the moment, we're unable to do that. However, we have put our account details on the screen below. If you feel you're in a position to, that you're able to give, if Forex Baptist Church is the church you call your own, um, then we really appreciate your generosity. Good morning, everyone. The reading is taken from John chapter 16 verses 5 to 15, the work of the Holy Spirit. But now I'm going away to the one who sent me, and not one of you is asking where I'm going. Instead, you grieve because of what I've told you. But in fact, it is best for you that I go away, because if I don't, the advocate won't come. If I do go away, then I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world of its sin and of God's righteousness and of the coming judgment. The world's sin is that it refuses to believe in me. Righteousness is available because I go to the Father and you will see me no more. Judgment will come because the ruler of this world has been, has already been judged. There is so much more I want to tell you, but you can't bear it now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own, but will tell you what he has heard. He will tell you about the future. He will bring me glory by telling you whatever he receives from me. All that belongs to the Father is mine. This is why I said, the Spirit will tell you whatever he receives from me. Well, thank you, Murray, for reading that to us so eloquently. So as a church, we're working our way through John's Gospel. Uh, and the reason that we've chosen John's Gospel, and I explain this most weeks, is because it just tells us so much about the character of who Jesus is. So if I'm calling myself a follower of Jesus here and today, in today's day and age, then I need to know who this Jesus is that I follow. If we claim to be Christians, if we can't claim to be his disciples, we, we need to know who he is. What makes him tick, the things that he says, the way he interacted with his friends. You see, this is all stuff that John tells us. I mean, slightly different to the other Gospels that tell us a lot about what he did, what it meant. John goes about telling us about who he was and how he interacts. And then in turn, we get to learn 
a lot more about the character of who God is through the character of Jesus. So we're at the moment uh, in chapter 16, and this is really great because it kind of tells us uh, quite a bit just uh, about what Jesus is beginning to explain. Uh, and Jesus at this point has just finished the Passover meal. This is the, the, what we know as the Last Supper. And if you think before that, we've just had the most victorious entrance to Jerusalem, where literally the city has gone wild. And like off the back of that, the Passover happens. Imagine the excitement in the room. Oh gosh, I would have loved to be a fly on the wall in that. But what actually ends up happening is through that meal, instead of it being there like, woo, gosh, where are we going next? Jesus begins to talk about his imminent departure and his imminent departure going to the Father heavily suggests he's about to die. And his disciples going from this one moment of just being like, wow, life is great, to suddenly being completely overturned by grief, anxiety and fear. As a nation, I think we get this. I think as a nation, and probably actually, let's even go bigger than this. At the, as the world at the moment, this coronavirus has just swept through the world. And for us as a nation, we're suddenly in a position where we don't know what tomorrow looks like. If we manage to come out of lockdown properly, will life ever go back to the way that it was? I think the next question is do we even want it to <laughs> but that's a story for another day but we've got this kind of like sense of you know we don't know what tomorrow's going to look like and that brings anxiety you know many of the the dreams for us in our careers for the businesses that we own for you know all of these various different things suddenly because of this coronavirus we we don't know what's going to come of it you know some have been laid off because of lockdown. And what that's meant is, suddenly you've got no money to be able to pay the bills. Like that's anxiety in the here and now, and what on earth does tomorrow look like? Let alone what does two, three months, four years, five years down the road look like? Some are furloughed, and with the furlough means less money, and so we live to our means. What does that mean? You know, when uh, we can't afford to pay the bills, we're having to tighten our belts left, right, and center. And then there's the nervousness of, well, even if I do go back to work, am I going to go back to a company that's going to survive this, or am I going to go back to a company that's actually going to get swallowed by this? To some, have continued to work through this, and with that, every day leaving the house and being around others brings with it a whole series of other fears. What if I catch this? Or what if I'm at worse, I would argue, what if I'm a carrier and I bring that into my home and my loved ones get this because of me? So many fears. And then there's those who are suffering literally because of health, because of the coronavirus, or who are fearing for the lives of their loved ones who are currently battling this now. Some literally have lost their loved ones and are hit by grief and tomorrow doesn't even look like something you think you'll get through today, let alone worrying about tomorrow. So I think we get this. I mean, we can, we can take aspects of this story and go, actually this potentially speaks to us here and now. You see, I always say this, that my hope is that as we study scripture, we're able to somehow see our own stories woven into the stories that we're reading. And that as Jesus and God and the Holy Spirit responds to the situation we read of, so too we hear his voice speaking to us centuries down the road where we go, ah. That's what you're saying to us. Today we're going to finish up by spending a little bit of time just reflecting on who the Holy Spirit is and actually allowing God to speak to us today. But before we get there, let's take a look at what Jesus is, is talking about. How does he respond to the anxiety, to the grief, to the 
fear of his friends. So they've just left this party and they're now walking to the Garden of Olives. And it's on that journey, Jesus is beginning to explain a few different bits and pieces. So let's join him in this. I'm in chapter 16 and I'm reading from verse five through to the end. And I'm gonna keep pausing as we get to certain parts and explaining a little bit about what it meant to these and what it means to us. So let's do this together. But I am going away to the one who sent me. And not one of you is asking where I am going. Instead, you grieve because of what I have told you. But in fact, it is best for you that I go away. Because if I don't, the advocate won't come. If I do go away, then I will send him to you. Okay. So as I explained, each of us currently, because of coronavirus, we're all in the same storm together. And a friend of mine, we were discussing actually just the way that the analogy works, that we're not all in the same boat. I mean, we aren't. I mean, the things that affect each of you, and then I've just gone through a few scenarios that are there, and there are variations on variations. So it's fair to say that we're all in the same storm, but I think very much we're all in different boats. And that actually, as an analogy, really helps us to understand that, well, how I may weather this storm will be different to how my neighbor will weather this storm. Some people's ships are just gonna feel like they're sinking. Uh, and so that in order for them to be able to survive, to keep their heads above water, it, it is a completely different storm to somebody else who manages to get through this storm and relatively unscathed. But we're all in exactly the same storm. So as we begin to explore this, you know, it's, it's worth noting that this is a storm that will eventually have an end point. And in, in Christian circles, particularly in our church, we use the term storm a lot because it just really helps. Because when you are in a storm, it's difficult to see beyond that storm. And that storm to us may be absolutely life destroying storm. And to our neighbor, they may be just experiencing a bit of a breeze. So to each of us, the storm concept works really well. But nationally, we're in the same storm. How we weather it will be different. Now, I love this because Jesus sees the grief of his friends. I mean, his friends at this point have just been super excited about what's going to be happening. And then all of a sudden, everything shifted and now they're overwhelmed with grief. Jesus is going, it's imminent, it's about to happen. He's going to the Father, this means he's going to die. Can you imagine what's going on as they walk? I, there's silence, there's the awkwardness, there's the sound of the footsteps, the sound of heavy breathing, but there's not a lot else. And Jesus is speaking into that storm. And Jesus points out the obvious. Not one of you are asking where I'm going. Not one of you is asking the what comes next. Not one of you is asking the why question. Because all you can see is your grief. And then he begins to explain why he's going and what's going to happen. I love this because he doesn't come in with the disciplinarian style. He doesn't come in and start to tell us off. He doesn't come in and start to say, you know, how dare you? I've been pointing this out still don't get it. No. He placates their grief by explaining what's going to come next. It's because Jesus knows what's going to come next. And as he begins to explain it, he says that as he goes, the Holy Spirit will come. Now, when we just look at the Old Testament, particularly if you look at the book of Joel, it tells us in Joel that, uh, that every man, every woman, young and old, slave and free, Jew and Gentile, will begin to experience the Holy Spirit, that everyone has the ability to be filled with the Holy Spirit and it's a gift that's been given. And if we receive it, then we will have God, the creator through the power of his spirit, inhabiting us and changing us into the likeness of him. This is incredible because up to this point, as Jesus points out, you know, he's just, 
in one place at one time. He can't be in multiple places at any one time because he is both God and human, but the restraints that have uh, you and I experience, and as much as I would like to be in multiple places at once, I can't. And Jesus couldn't. So this idea that as he goes, the Holy Spirit begins to fill individuals all at the same time. And so he's at work in us. So let's take this from my side of things. So at the moment, like the God's Holy Spirit is at work in me. And that's a really exciting thing to do. And I want to explore that more and I want to experience that more. And so I ex personally, I experienced that. And then as I begin to speak to others, the Holy Spirit is at work within me and is helping me through the words that I speak to, to my non-Christian friends, that God's Spirit is at work, not just in me, but also through me but check this I love this bit my non-christian friends are already experiencing the Holy Spirit at work in them and so that when I have that you know beautiful journey with friends uh, and, and actually helping them come to a place where they come to know God for themselves the Holy Spirit's already at work before I even say anything I mean this is just incredible now this is just on a one-on-one -on -one scenario. Now you imagine that when you have a church full of people who are legitimately excited by what God is doing in and at work through them and they're seeing these conversations happening. This is what God is about to bring into being as Jesus leaves. Can you, can you see now why Jesus is excited even as he's beginning to explain this? And he's kind of saying to his disciples, guys, I get it, I see your grief. But know this, I've got something greater for you. And that the Holy Spirit will be the advocate. Now, uh, in, uh, in, in this is a, a, a word that doesn't really translate very well for us. Uh, but in Greek, it's called paraclete. Now, that word can be translated as comforter, encourager, counselor, or advocate. Now, so this kind of sense that God is going to be with us, encouraging and comforting and counselling us th through the power of his Holy Spirit. So this means to you and to me that right now Jesus sees your grief, he sees your hurt, he sees your pain, he sees your anxiety, he sees your fear, and he's saying that if you would let him, through the power of his Spirit, he will give you the strength that you need for this moment right now that will help you weather this current storm and take you through it into something else. I think this is beautiful. I think this is something we need to hear. And as Jesus then goes on to explain actually what the Holy Spirit does, and we're going to be taking a look in a bit more depth at verses 12 to 15 in just a moment. But he talks about convicting the world of its sin. That, that's the job of the Holy Spirit. And I know sometimes we can find it far too easy for us to shoulder that responsibility ourselves and point it out. I think there's, I come across many of my brothers and sisters on the streets who are doing that. And you know what? I love you guys. You're out there and you're, you're explaining, uh, you know, the, the kingdom of God as best you can. But I think sometimes shouting at somebody and telling them about their wrongs is showing a characteristic of God which he can do very well on his own. You see, I know that the closer that I get to God, the more I begin to see the areas of my own life that is not right. And as God begins to reveal himself through the power of his Holy Spirit to an unbeliever, their response is, wow, you're amazing, look at the mess that I'm in. God does it on his own. He doesn't need us to. But what we do need to be doing is showing the love of God in every way possible so that people may see, wow, like God loves me so much. My response is, I repent of what I've done. I turn away from the lifestyle I've been living and I move into what God has got for us. This idea that when it, when it, that God does, that he, we see his righteousness, see how those are completely intertwined and that there is coming judgment. 
Uh, we don't like the term judgment. If we could do anything, it'd be quite nice to sever that away. You know, when we look at the Old Testament and we just see, you know, some of the stuff that goes on in that, it's difficult for us to get our heads around. And when I look at God, that's great. And I love the idea that God loves, but the idea of hell is something that's actually a little bit not easy to stomach. But judgment has to happen. And I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on this. I'm just gonna point out the obvious. You know what? When I uh, see insidious racism, like in uh, all areas of our society, I mean, this is what's kicking off at the moment uh, in uh, America at the moment, you know, that actually the way that it's so embedded in culture, like it is about time that we began to wake up and see that we want justice. See, that's a godly nature within us. And justice requires judgment. When I look at racism, particularly uh, in India, in the way that the Dalits, for example, um, a, a people group within India are so persecuted, they're seen as nothing uh, to the point that actually, should one die, nobody batters an eyelid. And if you touch a Dalit, you are then unclean because you have touched that Dalit. And, and, and it just like, but this is a person, it's an individual. It's a child, it's, you know, and, and when we begin to see that, our gut reaction is, no, God, this is wrong. Something has to change. When I hear of children being abused, my gut reaction is, Lord, no, this cannot be like this. Judgment, justice has to happen. And I love that God's judgment and justice is righteous. And so I've got to trust that somehow in this, God's going to work this out and he will use you and I to do that through the power of his Holy Spirit. So this is why we need to understand that justice and judgment has to be a characteristic of God. That's why suddenly hell begins to make sense as we begin to look at that. He begins to explain that a little bit more. But again, in order for us to be able to get through our subject for today, I, I want us to take a look at this last uh, central three verses, uh, four verses as we go through this. So verses 12 to 15. There is so much uh, more I want to tell you, but you can't bear it now. And I think that actually the reality is that where we are right now, like to take in the information that we've just been given even here, like it's hard for us to swallow before we begin to start looking at it in any depth. And even Jesus gets that, you know, and uh, he understands human nature uh, in, in, in a way that like I, I love because, you know, sometimes like, I don't know about you, but I'm really good with words and sometimes I can over explain a situation and I come wading in and I've got the answer if we do this, this, this and this and instead of just sometimes just listening. Uh, and I love that Jesus points this out. And then verse 13, he says, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own authority, but will tell you what he has heard. He will tell you about the future. He will bring glory by telling you whatever he receives from me. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said the Spirit will tell you whatever he receives from me. Guys, this is where actually it gets exciting. This is where the walking with the Spirit of God at work in us gets exciting. You see, now I believe that actually all of us are filled with the Holy Spirit. From the moment that we become Christians, we are a new creation, but we can experience the Holy Spirit in different ways and in different measures. And I genuinely believe that the more that we pursue the Holy Spirit at work in us, the more we begin to experience the Holy Spirit at work in us. So we've got to want this, we've got to push through, and we've got to say, yes, Lord, I want you. This means carving out quiet times with just you and God. It means sitting down and saying, Lord, Lord, I believe that you want to speak to me. I want to listen to you. It means saying that actually I'm going to surround myself by people that are of that way. To say that actually I'm going to say that I'm going to listen to music that is going to help me and edify my spirit. It means all of these things. This is about us like changing our lifestyle so that we are just completely uh, surrounded 
by God. And then is it any wonder that we begin to experience him? So I said it's wholehearted discipleship. So as we begin to listen to God, God genuinely speaks. And I can categorically tell you that through my lifetime, I've heard God speak to me in multiple ways and at different times. And sometimes about great things and sometimes actually just gently being told off. And I I believe that this becomes uh, the more that we try to listen and the more that we put ourselves in a position where we can hear, God does speak and he speaks to each of us. As we read scripture, God speaks to us through scripture. Now, in order for him to speak to us through the scriptures, we've got to be reading those scriptures. So this means there's a responsibility on you to delve into the word of God for yourself. This is why I keep talking about find a translation that works for you, that you are able to understand the words that you're speaking, that you're reading. Uh, And actually asking God as you delve into it, Lord, would you speak to me through this? And getting books that help you understand this makes sense because the more that we understand, the more actually the word of God begins to inhabit us and work its way through us. I love the way that sometimes I can read the same passage uh, that I read maybe two or three days ago. And today it means something totally different because the spirit of God is almost highlighting certain words and saying, this is what I'm saying to you here today. God does give us direction. He also gives us common sense as well. And I think sometimes that we can sit around going, well, Lord, um, which university do you want me to go to? Which job is it that you want me to go to? And I think sometimes jobs, uh, God's saying, you know, what, actually, I don't really mind. Just when you're there, like I'm going to use you. So make sure that you're in a position where you can be used. And I think this is this is this is beautiful. But it's about us putting ourselves in a position to be ready. And sometimes it's a still small voice. And uh, this is a conversation I've had over the decades as to how God speaks. And I would often say that majority of the time when I'm speaking to God and when I'm listening to God, God does speak. And I'm I'm gonna use an illustration uh, today and I've used this uh, in the past uh, with us as a church. And I just think actually this is uh, a really useful way of doing this, but this requires participation. So, uh, on your sofa if you're watching uh, at home or wherever you are you know if you're on the train and you're watching this with headphones on uh, be prepared I'm actually asking you to speak out loud but this, this is the this is uh, something that I want to encourage you to do so that what we're gonna do is we're gonna speak this words and I here I have a pen uh, and it is a black fine liner pen okay so we're gonna say black fine liner pen together black fine liner pen okay so we're going to say it three times in a row uh, and then the next time we're going to say it using the voice in our head and that is something that we know very very well Uh, so when we're thinking our thoughts we've got the voice in our head that helps us with that okay so we're going to say this together are you ready three two one black fine liner pen okay i can't hear you Let's try again. Black fine liner pen. Better bit of audience participation. One more time, come on. Black fine liner pen. Now this time you're saying it, so I want you to say it, but not audibly. Let's say it in here. Are you ready? Okay, one more time. Okay, so as silly as you might feel, I'm the one waving a pen to silence, okay? But that, black fine line of pen spoken in our minds. You want to know what does God sound like? He uses that voice. It's that voice that we hear, but it's thoughts that go against what we're naturally thinking at that moment, or it's thoughts that that are clearly not ours. And as we begin to listen to that, we say, okay, God, if this is you, right, we've then got to weigh that up. Like, is what God, well, the voice that we hear in our head, is that something that is in line with scripture? Is that something that is in line with the things that God is talking about? And when you hear, if you think you've got something, like, let's go and talk to another believer and say, hey, listen, was praying the other day a bit weird and I heard this voice or I got this sense that maybe God was saying this and as you speak it out you know let your fellow believer point you out whether or not he thinks she thinks this is correct or not 
Um, the more that you begin to explore this, the more that actually you begin to hear God speaking uh, multiple uh, ways and times. And I've had moments where literally I've been ranting at God saying, Lord, you know, why this, this, this? Lord, show me what your heart is. Show me what your next step is. And that's me and I'm just ranting. And I remember this one time and uh, I just got out of the shower and I was just having a moment where I was just ranting at God. I was like, Lord, I, I, I need to know what your plan is for me. Like, what do you, what, what's the next step? Do you know what I heard God say clear as a bell over over my voice? And it was this, Phil, you can't keep your eyes on what's in front of you. What are you gonna be like if I show you what's coming next? And I was like, oh, like, wow. Like, that was a little bit of a telling off, Lord, but I'll take it. Uh, and and so it, it just, just recently in our uh, church members meeting, I, I, I shared a word that I felt that God was speaking to us as a church. And uh, uh, we're going to be looking at that uh, in, in a couple of weeks as we begin to just explore what that is. But uh, this kind of like sense of like God is actually is, is, is at work and he's doing stuff and he's speaking to us. We need to know that actually we do not worship a God who is distant and who doesn't want to know. And in fact, actually, we worship a God who is completely in the moment, who is walking with us, who through the power of his spirit wants to be speaking to us. And so that means we've got to up our prayer life. That means that we've got to up our personal worship. That means we've got to up our personal life in scriptures. If we want God to be at work in us more, we've got to choose to put ourselves in a place where we sense it. So guys, this essentially ends our section of scripture for today. But I want you to know that in your boat, in your storm, as it rages around you, as it feels like you are on your own, know this, that God through the power of his Holy Spirit is with you and is gonna comfort you, is gonna counsel you, is your advocate, is not your enemy. And he's going to guide you through this storm if you would let him and take you into calm waters again. And so life is difficult at the moment. I get it. But God is not leaving you on your own to fend for yourself. But he is saying to you this morning, come, let me guide you through this. So as we did last week, I just want to encourage you where you are at the moment at home, simply just to put your hands out. And as you do, you're saying, God, would you again fill me with your spirit? And as you do, ask him to speak to you. Maybe he's been speaking through the things that we've been talking about. Maybe it'd be wise to go back and just read through some of the scriptures that we've been looking at up to this point and asking God to speak to you through them. And if you get a sense that God's Maybe put something on your heart. Contact us. Let's discuss it. Chat with one of your friends who's already a believer and say, hey, a bit weird, but I felt maybe this. Because God's real and he wants to speak to you. So let's just put our hands out and let's just take a moment and in the silence just say, God, fill me afresh this morning. Speak to me this morning. And let's expect him to do it. Holy Spirit, as a church, we just say, declare that you are welcome. You are welcome in our homes. You're welcome in our lives. You're welcome in our church. Holy Spirit, would you fill us afresh? Lord, as you fill us, would you wash out all the impurities that are stopping us from experiencing you in the way that you want us to? Would you begin to unblock our ears spiritually so that we might be able to hear your voice? Help us to see with your eyes that, Lord, we might see you at work. Purify our mouths, Lord, so that our speech 
may edify you. That as we speak, it'll be your truth that comes out. Holy Spirit, anoint our hands so that as we interact with our loved ones, our neighbours, our community, that we may bring your peace, your hope and your joy. Strengthen our feet, Lord, that as we see issues, that we may be moved to do something about it. And as we take your truth, your love, your gospel out into the world around us, Lord, we ask, would you do wonders in and through us? So, Holy Spirit, we look to you and say we can't do it on our own. But we know that with you, all things are possible.
come to the end of our service this morning and we hope you enjoyed it. We would normally invite you to stay for tea and coffee. Unfortunately, in this current climate, we're unable to do that. However, we are hosting a, a weekly Zoom call. Whether you are somebody who has been with Forex Baptist Church for years and years and years, uh, we would love to see you there to see how you're doing and to have a catch up. If you're somebody who's new today, if this is the first time that you're watching Forex Baptist Church online, then please, please come along, introduce yourself. It's nothing form formal, uh, a very friendly chat, so please come and say hello. Have a lovely week, Forex Baptist Church, and stay safe.